Uh, <clears throat> as I said, my name is Robert Neidhart, and uh, my son was uh, right at 35 years old when he was murdered, and uh, he was a private investigator and uh, uh, before this all occurred. And uh, it, it's been a long, long road, and uh, uh, a lot of, a lot of prayers, uh, church support, and uh, you'd be surprised how many people will contact you and say, "Well, we're still praying for you." And you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. But uh, 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 we, we've done a lot of things to, for this day to get here, and it's, uh, I just can't tell you how exciting it is. My son, uh, uh, he missed the, the, his passing of his, my mom and dad, and his uh, father-in-law, of his grandfather-in-law, and uh, he missed the graduation of his three wonderful daughters, and he missed the, the, the babies being bored, and he had never seen those. All this because somebody wanted to take it for some reason, for no reason at all that we can, I can never figure out. They, they murdered him. And uh, my son was never rich. Uh, he worked hard and uh, long hours to have what he had and provide for his family. And uh, it's beyond me why anybody would do it. And, uh, but we're here today, we're witness to it, the, the facts, and it did happen. Uh, the bones, the parts that we have found, we sent them to the medical examiner. And in 2006, they determined that the remains were of a Troy Neidhart, a uh, young man out of Oklahoma City. Uh, at this time, uh, we come out here, did some more, and uh, we contacted OSBI. So what we'd like to do today is, is maybe with the help of the Oklahoma Archaeological Society, OSBI agents, and Plain County Deputy Sheriffs, we have a very strong desire to find out, maybe if we can find any more information, because the uh, Plain County Sheriff's Department, OSBI, is definitely interested in solving uh, who did this crime right here. Today also we want to announce that we are uh, offering up to a $5,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the persons who killed Troy Neidhart uh, more than 12 years ago. <clears throat> With what we've recently learned, uh, we just think it's highly probable that uh, we're in a position to, to advance this case in a way we have not been able to in the past. Uh, the one thing that I'll close with that I think is, is very significant, many times when we offer rewards like this, uh, we have a general hope that there will be uh, people who will come forward and give information. We really believe in this case that there is specific information that, <clears throat> that people have. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is specific information that people have in this case that will uh, help us substantially resolve this case. Uh, so we really want to encourage those with information to bring that information forth, let us know uh, what they have, and we want to use that information in the appropriate way to help, help this family and certainly uh, come to a, a successful conclusion in, in investigating this case, this tragic case with uh, Troy Neidhart. Having this come to an end, uh, my wife and I, we. One of his favorite places to go was Platt, you know, Sulphur down there. So we drove down there shortly after we, he was missing, trying to think maybe, well, maybe he's down there camping or whatever. And uh, we do go here, go there, and just hopefully we might, hit, but nothing. And so we've, we've resided to the fact a long time ago, in my heart, I felt that he was uh, dead, uh, on, actually on 9-11. And the reason is because we were supposed to meet that next day, and he always kept his word to, to me. And we always had lunch every Thursday, and uh, you know it just progressed from there. And uh, went to where he lived, and and one day there was stuff there, the next day there, everything's gone. Uh, none of it made sense, other than the fact that somebody got him. I just didn't know where. And uh, for for that five years, I, I've searched, and 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 uh, we, you know, finally finally found him. Well, what we do is we use a, a number of different archaeological field processing techniques and simply in this case we're applying them to a crime scene rather than an archaeological site, but the, the process is essentially the same. We're going through uh, an area that uh, was the, uh, the location of the original grave site and uh, sifting through all the leaves that have accumulated over time and, and the dirt. We'll go through that with the screens that you see over there. That's what they're doing behind me, looking for any small items. Of course, we try to find things in place in the ground 
and map in their locations and record them and, and uh, uh, get them entered into evidence that way. We, uh, after we initially assess the scene, when we start actually doing the processing, metal detecting is one of the first things that we do because, you know, on a crime scene there's always the possibility of, of metal objects, shell casings and things like that. So, uh, you know, we always do the metal detecting first before we actually start doing any, any excavation work or anything to try to pinpoint those items. Well, things are finally going to come to an end. I feel we're, we're going to get them, you know. They didn't, they didn't want to be caught, but they're going to get caught. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful. It just, there's no progress made all this for a long time, you know, and then all of a sudden, wham! And uh, when I was talking to Mr. Tanner, the head person here, the uh, OSBI, well, besides the, the head of the OSBI, and uh, I talked to him three months ago, and uh, he said, man, I'm going to do something. And, and I mean, three months later, here we are, you know? And uh, after 13 years, and there, that's him right there. He's real nice. I mean, can't say enough about them. I, I really appreciate everything that they've done. But you can't believe how much this, this is something too. It really is. You guys are showing, and somebody's going to see this. And uh, some people are bloodthirsty, you know, and they'll turn their brother in for $5,000. Know?